In general, alcohols don't ordinarily participate in SN1 or SN2 reactions. OH- just isn't a good enough leaving group. For a frame of reference, SN1 reactions typically require leaving groups whose conjugate acids have pKa's below about 2, give or take a few. And SN2 reactions require leaving groups with conjugate acid pKa's below about 10, again, give or take. The conjugate acid of OH- water, has a pKa of about 16, not good enough to leave by either mechanism. But alcohols do sometimes undergo SN1 reactions under strongly acidic conditions. Under these conditions, the OH group can be protonated, improving its leaving group ability. Now the leaving group is water, whose conjugate acid H3O plus has a pKa of about negative 2, plenty good enough to leave on its own, provided that the carbocation it's departing from is stable enough. For instance, tert-butanol reacts with HBr to give tert-butyl bromide via an SN1 mechanism. This reaction requires a high concentration of HBr and the removal of water to drive the reaction forward by Le Chatelier's principle. The scope of the SN1 reaction of alcohols is quite limited. It requires a strong acid, anhydrous conditions, that is, no water present, a relatively stable carbocation to be formed, and that a competent nucleophile is present, either the solvent, the conjugate base of the strong acid, which limits us to HCl, HBr, or HI, or nearby within the molecule itself. Like with SN1 reactions, alcohols don't participate in SN2 reactions. OH- is just too poor a leaving group. In order to substitute an, substitute an OH group, we must first turn it into a good leaving group. In the SN1 reaction, we did this by protonating the OH with strong acid. But if we're substituting by an SN2 mechanism, which requires strong nucleophiles, strong acids aren't an option, because they'd probably just protonate the strong nucleophile. There are a number of strategies to get around this, and turn OH groups into good leaving groups. We'll focus on one such method, tosylation. The reagent toluene sulfonyl chloride, or tosyl chloride, has this structure. You'll notice the strange looking sulfur with a two plus charge and two negatively charged oxygen atoms. Don't be tempted to make double bonds here. It might look nicer, but sulfur doesn't have any orbitals it can use to make pi bonds with. It's sp3 hybridized, and any d orbitals it might have are much too high in energy to participate in bonding. Its LUMO is sigma star SCL. The oxygens have negative charges, raising the energies of their sigma star orbitals. And with a positive 2 charge on sulfur, that's a pretty fantastic acceptor orbital. It can react readily with the oxygen lone pair of an alcohol, like this, to give a highly unstable intermediate with a positive formal charge on oxygen and a 2 plus on the adjacent sulfur. But if a weak base, like pyridine, is present, this unstable situation can be alleviated by deprotonating the oxygen. The product, called a tosylate, is a very good leaving group. Its conjugate acid has a pKa of around zero. Once tosylated, alcohols become very good leaving groups, just like halides, Cl, Br, or I. For this reason, tosylates are sometimes called pseudo-halides. Tosylates can undergo SN1 or, or SN2 reactions almost as readily as chlorides, bromides, or iodides can. There are a few caveats to tosylation. Since the installation of the tosyl group occurs by an SN2 mechanism, really bulky alcohols can't be tosylated easily. In fact, it's almost impossible to tosylate tertiary alcohols. And tosylation can only be done when the alcohol is the most nucleophilic site within the molecule. 
Amino alcohols, for instance, are tosylated at nitrogen rather than oxygen. To summarize, alcohols can be turned into good leaving groups by protonation, most commonly in the context of SN1 reactions, or by tosylation, which is typically used to enable SN2 reactions.